Starting our new build, it begins. We're doing the Estes Shuttle Skill Level 5 Rocket. Uh, it's going to be a great build. Uh, I would not recommend this for you for Skill Level 5. It looks like I'm going to have some fun with it. Uh, but uh, here we go anyways. I'm not going to do a whole big unboxing. Uh, we've all seen Rocket 2 uh, stuff come out. We've got our nose cone, our main body tube. Uh, lots of other little tubes here. And then we have our... Uh, Instructions. Neat thing about the instructions, you've got one group that comes out with uh, looks like German and a couple other languages, then English and a couple other languages. If I'm going to be cutting out any templates or anything like that, it'll be out of the German version. That way I have the English version always intact and ready to use. Uh, if I need to make a photocopy of something, I can do it off the English version. If I've cut out templates, I can't get things done, so we always save the uh, English version untouched. Uh, we've got the decals. The decals are one continuous sheet, so you have to do a little bit of work on the cutting of those. Uh, very, very sharp exacto knife for your decals. Uh, let's see, this is one of the uh, body tube marking guides. This is actually cardstock, and it's for the shuttle body. So our shuttle body is going to be made with cardstock. Uh, we have cardstock for our motor mounts, the different tubes and, and mountings on the outside of the uh, booster body, shuttle body. Um, we've got our five sheets of fin stock, uh, balsa wood, uh, various different types. We've got our plastic uh, nozzles and nose cones. Uh, we've got our bag with our recovery and uh, engine mount stuff, uh, engine ring. A uh, piece of clay for uh, bouncing the weight out. Uh, shock cord, which will be get switched out to a Kevlar shock cord, uh, three to four times the length of the rocket. And it also does come with a 24 millimeter Estes quick screw on engine retainer system, so you can use the uh, composite motors, black powder motors, uh, you name it. Uh, going to be a pretty fun build, I think. So. We're going to go over the instructions a little bit and then start our build. Remember, save your plastic bags from the kits. Uh, all There's like five or six bags that all these parts come in. Uh, save the bags. If you're gluing, you can put things on top of the bags and the glue will not grab. Even if it's super glue or CA glue, it won't grab onto these bags 99% of the time. So by saving them, it gives you somewhere to glue uh, and let things sit and dry without messing up um, your work table or your parts. So we're going to get all this stuff put away and uh, bagged up in Ziploc bags, all the small parts put away so they don't get lost, and then we'll start with the build. Back in a few. Okay, so a couple of things before we start building. Uh, one, um, hands. Before we start handling these rocket parts, uh, rip them out of the bag or whatever the case may be, wash your hands. You could have grease from the hamburger you just had for dinner. You could have all sorts of things on there, not to mention your own natural body oils. Uh, they can impede glue adhesion. They can impede your paint adhesion. So I wash my hands pretty good and rinse them very, very well and dry them thoroughly with a clean, cloth, clean towel before I start building my rocket. And that just ensures that I'm not transferring anything from my hands onto the rocket parts, uh, say the body tube or whatever. Um, I also make sure I have all my materials ready I, that I have, uh, stay Bob, uh, my glues, I've got my X-Acto knives, I've got new blades, because I always start a build with a brand new blade. My pen, uh, sticks with sandpaper, sticks for holding rockets while I'm painting them. Uh, various sizes of sticks, as a matter of fact, for holding rockets while I'm painting them. Uh, I also have this neat little device that I can shove up inside a body tube and let it go and it kind of opens up a little bit and holds it steady for me. This is nothing more than a coat hanger, as is this that I can use. I've bent the uh, top into a little hook that I can hook on a nail, uh, and I can hook a rocket with this. I can bend this to a, a better J so I can hold things. Just make your own tools. Come up with great things. But remember, wash your hands before you start uh, painting and handling the rocket and gluing things. That way you'll uh, be better off with uh, paint adhesion and glue adhesion. Alright, before we start this build, I'm going to go over some of the things that I have in my box that I plan on using for this build. Uh, I've found that these things work for me 
and my budget on how I'm building things. Some of them aren't going to be the recommended things to use for this build by Estes, but we all have our own little uh, quirks and ways we like to do things. Uh, first off, let's go over some of the basics. Of course, we need uh, a ruler, some sort of measuring device. I've got a couple of different types that I use for measuring and marking on tubes. Um, I have a little spatula that I can use for mixing up wood putty. And, uh, of course, we will be using wood putty, Elmer's wood filler. Uh, that's used on body tube spirals and the balsa fins if you don't paper fins. I keep a mason jar, a little canning jar that I can put hunks of it in, mix it up with water, and get it to toothpaste consistency, uh, which makes it easier to spread using this tool or a paintbrush. I have various paintbrushes that I use for glue, uh, you know, wood glue, Elmer's glue, white glue. An X-Acto knife with a brand new blade. I can't stress you enough. Every time I start a project, I have a brand new blade, and I have extra blades on hand. If I cut a body tube, I'm going to want a fresh blade, period. I don't care if I've used this blade just to cut a couple pieces out of balsa wood, if I'm cutting a body tube, if I'm slicing fin holes, if I'm making two parts out of a, a body tube, I'm going to put a brand spanking brand new blade on the exacto knife. That way you get good cuts. I have various types of scissors that I use. Uh, uh, glues that are recommended by me, I use glue when I'm doing uh, motor mount tubes because you want to be able to uh, slide that tube rings and everything up in there. This gives you the ability, it doesn't grab as quick, you can smear this in there and slide a tube in and get it positioned. I also use yellow glue or wood glue. The wood glue grabs a lot faster, so I would not use this if I'm sliding rings onto a tube, if I'm trying to position something. This is great when you have it, you're going to have, be in position in a split second, like putting a fin on, because it grabs almost instantly, especially if you dab it on and let it sit for a minute and then apply the fin, it grabs shortly after you put it there. I'm also going to have epoxy glue. I might be using it to glue a couple of things in there, so I do have epoxy glue on hand. Five minute if you want a, a quick bond, or 30 minute if you're not too worried about uh, time frames. Um, the instructions do recommend plastic modeling glue. And also, they don't say JB Weld, they say epoxy, but I say JB Weld for your motor mount ring. One reason, this is heat resistant. So when you put on your motor mount ring to your engine tube, to your motor retention system, always use JB Weld or a heat resistant epoxy. Uh, of course you have to have some sort of device for marking on the tubes. I like mechanical pencils because they give you nice fine lines. Uh, I would not use a marker because the marker will bleed through the paint. And various grits of sandpaper. Uh, I have from 150, I've used 80, I kind of shied away from using 80 unless it's a large diameter rocket or a large piece, but 150 to uh, 4,000, 6,000, depending on how fine you want to sand your uh, primer or any other part and get it smooth for paint or whatever the case may be. So various grades of sandpaper are a must. Uh, I have various sized wooden dowels, skewers stuff like that. These are for holding rocket parts while I'm painting them or they're drying with glue on them and for sanding. You can glue some sandpaper onto a wooden dowel and now you can sand places that you couldn't before or you can sand a circular small hole easier uh, stuff like that so that's another thing. Last but not least one of the things I keep on hand uh, is coat hangers. Now, I take these old metal coat hangers and I cut the ends off and I bend them into my own little hooks. These are great for holding things while they're drying. So now I can hook up as a hole in it and let it dry. Uh, this works great for uh, putting up, like uh, with the shuttle, I'm going to have the two uh, booster tubes. I can slide this up in the booster tube and hold it while I'm painting. Uh, obviously, you'd want to wear gloves. Uh, you'll hear me say it again later on. Anytime I get ready to build a rocket, the first thing I do is wash my hands. Uh, you have oils on your hands. You have all sorts of things on your hands that you want to get off your hands before you start touching your body tubes and everything else. So uh, I do have brushes for applying glue again. I also use them to apply wood filler. 
Um, you could po possibly use the uh, wood putty uh, epoxy for your fillets if you want to. You can use glue, you can use uh, fix it epoxy, whatever works for you. So that's basically what I'm going to be using in this build for this rocket to um, going to be being built over the next few days. So uh, we'll get on to the build and uh, opening and getting all the parts for the category. Our first step, we're going to be starting to assemble the shuttle body. So we've got uh, our tube. This is a small, skinny, narrow tube. It's uh, 10 and 3 quarters inches long. And our three stalks of balsa wood. Uh, we're going to be cutting this all out. So remember, start off with a fresh, sharp hobby knife. We don't want to use an old, dull nut hobby knife and start messing up our balsa from the get-go. Uh, so fresh hobby knife. We'll cut out all these parts and we'll uh, get them prepped and do some dry fitting on the tube and then uh, we'll assemble most of it and to keep the, sh the t length of this video down I'm not going to sit here and video record everything I do. We're skill level 5 builders we know how to build rockets so I'll just point out some of the finer things as I build this rocket that I'm discovering uh, while I'm dry fitting this and getting everything set up so we'll go ahead and get our pieces cut out we'll get our tube uh, marked up and ready to go and then I'll go over the fine details of the actual assembly and, and uh, dry fit and gluing. So we've got all these pieces out of the uh, balsa wood and I've stopped at this point to give some pointer tips. Uh, we're dealing with very, very thin pieces here where it'd be easy to snap off a piece if we're not careful. So what I've done is before I pop out that center, I'm looking at these outside edges and they have the little bumps from the laser cut. So I'm 220 sandpaper just barely touching those bumps just to knock that edge off because we have paper that's going to be gluing to it, the cardstock, and I'm feeling to make sure that it's nice and smooth. After that, I'm going and cutting out that centerpiece that the tube slides up into. And then once I've got that out, I've got, again, 220 sandpaper on a dowel, and I'm not really doing much more than just turning the dowel and very lightly touching it against the edges of the wall. And I'm being careful not to push hard because I don't want to snap the balsa wood. Then I do a dry fit and it slides on there without too much issue. So we're good there. Uh, for marking the tube, these small tubes can be difficult to mark. So I've got an old picture frame that the glass broke out of. So we switched out and uh, put it in a new frame. So I just use that to draw my line. Basically I just take it and put it in there. I can hold it tight with my fingers and I can draw my line so now I've got my straight line going all the way down the tube. You can do that with just about any picture frame or if you have angle iron or a tube jig. So we're going to get ready for the next step of uh, doing this. All these parts are sanded. All the little bumps and edges have been removed from the uh, balsa wood marking. I'm going to go over everything and dry fit it, make sure we got it really good, and then we'll actually get to the last little bit of it. So what we've done is we've glued the very small piece of flush with the front end, and the instructions say flush with the front end. That's the only one that's glued, and again, you have to be very, very careful because this end piece here will snap open and break, as well as the bottom, you'll have two pieces, which makes it twice as hard. So we're flush all the way around here. The rest of the pieces we just slid on. They're not glued in place because we have to align them and fit them. So they're just slid on there. So you want them to have, be a little loose, but not so loose that they fall, and you don't want them too tight because then you snap the pieces. Next, we remove out of our uh, other balsa sheet. Uh, we're going to remove parts N, which is our straight piece, and O, which is our curved piece. N will line up with the one side, underside, uh, it's actually going to be the top, and then O will line up with the other side, and that's going to get our alignment this way. And then we're going to cut out our other two pieces. Um, it's going to be our two P pieces that go on the side, and they're going to go snap into place. And then we go we go and do a whole bunch of gluing after we do that. But we have to get these pieces in and lined up first before we start gluing. So we'll go ahead and get the dry fit for the lineup, and then we'll show the glue up. All right, so we uh, got our spines on. That's basically uh, our ribbing and our spines. The way we I did the spines is I've got a marker line that we did to line up to everything originally. So I just got my pieces close to where they were supposed to and I used the curved spine which was the uh, um, letter O piece and I wiggled and pushed everything in place carefully not to snap anything 
and then I went ahead and did the same thing with N. Then I got my two P parts. Now, after I cut out my P parts and got all the little knockouts cut out, I took my uh, sandpaper and I just barely knocked off the little laser tabs left by the laser. Uh, popsicle stick with a little bit of sandpaper or just sticking it in the holes. Same thing, knocking off those little edges of uh, tab left. And then we're going to dry fit this on. It has a curve that matches the O curve. So all we do is just line up the pieces. Uh, it's kind of hard to grab this without snapping things, so we've got to be really, really careful here. And we're going to line up our pieces and just start pushing them into place nice and easy so we don't snap anything. And if we need to sand a little bit more somewhere, we sand a little bit more and just keep working and finagling until we get all our pieces together. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working my way down and we can use tape to hold this if we need to. And there we go. So that's all the pieces lined up and in on that side. So I could put some tape on this to hold it in place if I needed to. And that'll work great. We'll spin it around and we'll work the other side. Uh, I would suggest finding a place where you can really, really work with this carefully and not have to worry about being bumped or jostled while you're doing it. And so there's our dry fit. And it looks pretty good. I'm going to sit here and adjust it and make sure everything lines up on our lines. And then we'll go ahead and start uh, doing our glue up. And I'll come on when I finish the last little bit of glue up. But you can see this is our, our fuselage body for the glider. We're going to be doing a little bit of sanding to get everything to even up. Then we'll be gluing our paper skins on the top and the bottom. And there's some fin assemblies that go on this. But it's not difficult. Uh, I would be careful just because you have your splines that you can, uh, if you're not careful, you can start cracking things and busting uh, balls so real easy. Uh, so I would sand parts before you start removing the inner little pieces and knock off your knock your little uh, nubs from your laser cut, that uh, little tabs that are left from when they do the laser cutting in there before you actually start assembling and dry fit, dry fit, dry fit, dry fit as many times as you can until it's, it fits on smooth and easily uh, because you, if you start forcing you're going to break something. So uh, we're going to go ahead and finish getting this dry fit taped up and then we'll start the glue up and uh, come back on when we get the last little bit of glue. So we've gotten up to the point where we're uh, gluing everything in place. First you're going to uh, tack glue your ribs in place uh, according to the instructions. So we'll be doing the tack gluing of the ribs, and then we'll be gluing our splines into place and then our uh, side walls into place. After I've done all that, what I've done is I've reinforced them with fillets. The easiest way for you to do that is just use a paintbrush with your glue and get up inside here and dab your fillet in place. It's a little bit more control, I think, than the tip of the glue bottle. Uh, a little bit of practice. I've done it a lot. So it's not too hard for me to do. Uh, again, it, it's just reinforcing the, any glue that you have in the joint by adding a fillet. And to me, nothing can uh, be wrong by making something a little bit stronger, especially when it comes to gliders. that tend to hit the ground a little harder than you want. And then I added a uh, fillet along the spline. And I'm going to touch up the, the joints here and make sure that everything has a, a nice glue fillet holding it in place. Uh, if I need to, I'll t take and wrap tape around things to hold everything in nice and tight to itself. So uh, we're at that point now where this is going to have to sit for uh, a few hours, if not overnight, to dry. And then we'll be able to uh, start putting our body uh, panels in place. So we're up to, uh, while the uh, wing assemblies are drying from the uh, wood putty, the Elmer's wood putty, uh, we're going to go ahead and start on the back on the uh, glider body. I did a little bit of Elmer's wood putty in the uh, tabs where the uh, fin slots went together on both sides and sanded that smooth. Uh, eventually this is all going to get a coat of the wood putty and sand it smooth but prior to assembling the wings on it. But we want to get the uh, body panels on so I've already cut the top panel out and it's showing how to line it up here. 
uh, we're going to be gluing it on. So we're going to be cutting it uh, across here and then lining it all up and, and setting it on here. So again, I'm going to use uh, my paintbrush and glue method. Um, I just I like to be able to, to have the control that the paintbrush gives me putting the glue where exactly where I want to versus the tip. And if I was using white glue, it wouldn't be as big of a deal, but I use the wood glue because I think it dries faster and it grabs quicker and it has a wide tip instead of a fine tip. And I'm able to actually prevent from getting excess glue using the paintbrush. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do our dry fit and get ready to uh, put this on there. Uh, we have to cut this sec back section off and it goes on in two pieces. So we'll get that done and we'll get it glued on there and take a look at it and then get ready to do the other side. So you can see we've got the uh, bottom glue or the top glued on for the shuttle, uh, the bottom's the more curved side. Uh, blue tape, hold it in place while the uh, glue is setting up. It shouldn't take more than about 20 minutes or so. I've checked and looked along the seams, squished, made sure everything's got good contact. Uh, if I wanted, I could go inside and I could paint a line inside uh, of glue, and I just might do that to uh, make sure that we got a good bond between the paper and the glue, uh, paper and the valse wood. So we're going to let this dry before we do the top. Then we have to do the top. Then there's some more sanding, uh, start putting the fins together, motor mount, stuff like that. So the next part is uh, while the glider's drying, I'm moved on to the next part, which is making the nose section of the glider and you're taking a total of 12 of these pieces, six, uh, two pairs of six and you're gluing them together. So what I did is I used my paintbrush and I dabbed just a little bit of glue around each one. You can see I didn't like get glue all of the whole thing, just most of it. And I squish them together and I keep my wet rag that I use for wiping glue off my hands nearby. Wipe off the excess squish it and line it, squish it, straighten it out. Let's try and get everything straightened up and nice and pretty. And then we'll be gluing these six, these two pieces together to make a, a huge 12 stack. And then that will eventually become the nose. So we're gonna let this dry. And then we'll be assembling this all together as a big nose cone assembly. Now, the shuttle wing assembly all comes off of uh, one sheet of balsa wood. Uh, so we've cut all the different pieces and it's got uh, a couple extra pieces that uh, help for alignment uh, for keeping the aileron straight and your, your rudder elevations and all that stuff. So uh, we've cut these all out, gone through and all the little bumps from uh, the laser marking, sand them smooth carefully, trying not to break anything. Uh, we're going to do some beveling. We've got a piece we have to bevel for the um, uh, elevator to bevel it to get it so the uh, angle's right. And what we'll do is we'll get one assembled and then uh, show some of the parts for the uh, assembly on the next one. All right, so I've already assembled one wing and I'm getting ready to do the other. Again, I told you save that plastic. Here's that plastic and another piece because we're going to be gluing this wing together and we don't want to obviously glue it to the uh, tabletop. So we're going to do a dry fit, make sure everything lines up pretty good, looks fine. Yeah, might have to do a little sanding, but it looks pretty good. That gives you an idea what that sub-assembly is going to look like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my finger. This is already slightly tacky glue. I'm going to look again where I'm putting my glue, and then I'm going to go ahead and tap, tab my glue on the tabs with my finger. So I'm dabbing it on. And I'm not trying to get a whole lot of glue because if I put too much glue on here, it's just going to squish out and it does no good. And a lot of times when I'm attaching fins, what I'll do is I'll dab the glue on with a, a brush or the tip of the bottle. And I'm going to let it sit for a minute to tack up. This glue is actually tacked up in the cup already. So I don't have to do that. I just have to make sure I don't have excess glue that's going to squish out all over the place. <clears throat> And then we're going to put a little bit up here on the leading edge for the front attachment. And I just, I like using my finger because I'm able to be a little bit more accurate with it. And since it is tacked, it's got a little bit of clumps here and there. So I'm going to make sure I don't have any clumps stuck in the glue. Okay. So now we're going to assemble 
And put my finger there so I can get a little bit more glue back on that. Two pieces. There we go. Can't wait too long because, like I said, this glue is tacky. We'll slide that piece in. And then we're going to line this piece up and slide it on. Once I'm happy with all my alignments, other bag goes on top. And a stack of books. Now we're going to make sure it stays aligned. This is the first assembly that I glued together. Uh, so now I can take this. I'm going to let it dry a little bit more. And I can uh, sand it smooth. I can skin it with paper. I, I'm still wondering if I'm going to skin it with paper or not. Uh, I like skinning my balsa with paper because it reinforces it. makes it a little bit stronger, especially on glider wings uh, that tend to snap. But it does add a significant amount of weight because you're using glue and paper. Uh, so I'm just kind of looking at this. I'm, um, everybody's told me so far you have to do a lot of pre-painting on your assemblies, uh, your sub-assemblies. So I may paint it, uh, sand, seal this with sanding sealer or primer, and then open my holes back up and make sure my tabs are covered with tape so I don't paint them. And then uh, that'll be ready for uh, assembly. And this way I have my uh, sub-assemblies pre-painted. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this just yet. So we're just going to have to wait and see how that works out. So I've got most of the uh, sub-assembly for the, fit, uh, the shuttle fins, wings, uh, together. Um, I've rounded my edges. And I rounded the edges on the uh, rudder parts. Now what I've done is I've taped the tabs. I'm going to do the same thing on these. And by taping the tabs, I can now take and paint uh, wood filler onto it and that's going to prevent the tabs from getting wood filler on it and make it easier for assembly later. Um, again, this is a part where having the plastic bags comes in handy so you don't get it all over the place. I'm going to paint it real quick, flip it over, paint the other side real quick, and then put plastic on top, throw another bag on top. Yes, it's going to make it all wrinkly, but I'm getting ready to turn right around and sand most of this right back off. <coughs> the weight of the books will keep it from warping. Then I'll turn around and do the same thing for the fins and the actual ailerons uh, after they're sanded with the bevel and everything matches up and dry fits really well. The only thing I'm not going to be doing is the, the uh, parts where the ailerons go. I'm not going to get any uh, uh, filler in there. I'm just going to leave that blank. But I'm going to try and get everything else filled. Uh, this is wood putty made to toothpaste or better consistency. Uh, it's not too wet, not too dry, so it, it flows with a brush not too bad. So we're going to do that, put a weight on it, uh, and let it dry, and then uh, pick up from there. All right, so today we've uh, gotten the bottom, or the underside of the uh, shuttle body glued into place. We're going to let that dry. And then we uh, pulled the blue tape off of the uh, shuttle wings, off the tabs, and sanded everything else down. Uh, I've removed most of the sanding sealer, uh, leaving pretty much just in the grain. And then I dry fit my pieces so that we can get ready for glue up. And they fit really, really nice in there. So those fit really good. Uh, that leaves uh, doing a bevel on the um, ailerons. We've got to do a uh, bevel so that they have the angle for flight. And we'll be using two different tools to make sure that everything gets uh, put on the right. We've got a triangle for 90 degrees to make sure that our rudders are 90 degrees. So that'll work out really, really nice there. And then we've got a trim tab for our ailerons so that when we put our ailerons in, we glue them in place. And this is set for the proper angle so that we can set them in there and we get the proper angle for... Uh, our lift body. So we're going to go ahead and get uh, these pieces ready to go and then we'll get them glued together and painted up. So we're uh, starting on some of the uh, external parts and other sub-assemblies. Um, these are going to be the rings that hold the external boosters and uh, whatnot like that. So we've got the first two pair that are going to get glued together cut out. And this is BBBB. And then we've got the little wooden dowel that we need to cut in 10 millimeter length. So I marked the two 10 millimeter lengths coming from end to end, coming in, so I'm cutting the center out. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to roll it back and forth, keeping my finger over the good part that I don't want flying away. And I'm going to apply steady, gentle pressure. And we're going to keep rolling until it snaps through. 
and there we go. So now I've got two 10 millimeter parts. Each has a flat end and then the end that I cut and I can tell which end is what because of markings on the ends and one shows the signs of being cut the other is just flat. So I can make sure that I keep things straight and aligned and they come out nice and, and square and not angled off at funny angles or anything like that by having a, a square factory edge. So we're going to continue on with the sub-assembly. We're gluing these two pieces together, then the uh, two pegs into there, and uh, then we're going to set that aside and start on the next sub-assembly. But there's a bunch of these that have to be done together, and they're all different uh, amounts of you know, two and three and four different uh, booster tubes that go into it. So we'll keep working on them slowly and surely a little bit of glue in here, glue them together, and then uh, go on to the next one. All right, so we've been going through doing all these little sub-assemblies. Uh, and these are all two of the cardstock pieces glued together and then lined up and straightened up. Uh, this is two pieces glued together, then two more pieces glued on with the uh, wooden dowels rounded over. I'm going to round these a little bit more with some sandpaper in my Dremel probably. Uh, those are going to be the lock pins for the uh, shuttle. And then these are two pieces, two pieces, two pieces with an added piece, and then the two tabs on it. Then I went on to the uh, main body tube or the external tank tube. Took our, uh, took and drew our straight line down the side with a guide marker, or a tube marker, or door frame, or whatever you have. Then we marked our tube slots after putting our uh, marking guide on. We start cutting our tube slots, and the easiest way to cut a tube is with mold, with a brand new, very sharp exacto knife. And what you want to do is you want to make multiple passes. You're not trying to cut it all at once, just multiple passes, top to bottom, following the line. Be patient, take your time. You don't want to crush the tube or go through and, and overcut, undercut, all those neat things. Don't snag on the blade from something there. And you can see it's actually starting to pierce through in some spots now. I don't want to use a sawing motion in the tube because then I'm chance crinkling or denting the tube. So I'm just going to continue to make my passes. I get right down here at the end. And then let's go back up here to the top. Hit the line. Okay. Now I can come over. This one I'm going to very lightly score. And we pierce through. And then we do the same thing down here. The ends are even harder because they can crumple so easy. They flex. Okay, now I'll come down the other side. And this is where it starts to get fun because it, the tube starts to, to bend and crinkle. The integrity is no longer there because you've actually cut into it. Your blade can start drifting. Next thing you know, you have a slot wider than what you want it. Now I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and I'm going to smooth off the inside for a cut. And if it's high up in the tube where you can't reach it, grab your stick, sandpaper, and go ahead and do that. And all I'm trying to do is get rid of any burrs on the inside that are going to hang me up later on when I go to insert the motor mount assembly. Okay, so that's ready, and our motor mount assembly is just about ready. We've got one layer of glue on uh, one side fillets going. 
So we built it with uh, the rings and then two parts, measured out our distances, used the standard uh, motor push ring. I want bet one better. I always have a spare motor laying around so I can drop it in and use it to mark how far I need to put my motor mount. So being as this had the uh, Estes retainer ring, what I did is I took the retainer, put my motor on the retainer, put a little glue right at the very end where I th um, Actually, I slid this down first, pushing the, the ring up until I had it where I wanted it. Did a pencil mark, pulled the motor out, pulled the ring out, put glued just the other side of the pencil line. Then I reinserted everything. And again, I'm seating the motor mount block all the way up to, like it would be if this were really a, a, a motor being ready to fire. So it's seated all the way up there like it's supposed to be. And then I pulled everything back off, and we're going to let it dry like that. So now we know that it's set and gauged for our retainer ring to actually sit on the tube properly, right up against it like it's supposed to all the way around. So it's not just a little on there, it's all the way on there. There's, there's no gap between the tube and the ring. It's all the way up. And the motor fits in perfectly. That's a D motor. <laughs> and the motor fits in perfectly. <laughs> That's the E motor there. And it comes up flush like it should be. It has an adapter for using the uh, shorter 24 millimeter D motors. And then you can do, use the E motor. So we're going to let that finish drying. It's probably going to take overnight to dry because it's a little bit cool now. Uh, I've got my fin units hanging and drying. Uh, the rest of the way until they're hard dry. Uh, they're dry enough that I don't have to worry about warping anymore. So we're pretty much at a stop point now. Uh, tomorrow we'll be working on the fins and other stuff. Eventually this will be going in there and it has notches for the fins. So you have to make sure you line everything up before you start gluing. Um, lot to do. Lot to lot to do. Uh, a lot of little sub assemblies to do. Next, we're going to probably be doing the, uh, according to the instructions right here, we're going to be starting to work on the, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're going to start working on the uh, external tubes, the large, large boosters, and then the uh, smaller boosters after that. And just work our way around through all this different parts here. So, continuing on. All right, we're up to marking uh, the different uh, tubes for receiving their harnesses or their saddles, as they may call them. Uh, so one thing I, I learned a long time ago from marking tubes, it's really easy to draw a circle around a tube. All you have to do is get it bumped up against something. Take your pencil or your pen. Uh, pencil is always better because it doesn't bleed through the paint. And just hold it while you rotate the tube. Make sure the tube is bumped up against the stop so it can't shift laterally and just turn the tube and hold it on your marks. And you get a perfectly marked all the way around the circumference of the tube. And this is very handy for uh, external engine rings, your engine mount tubes when you're putting a, a line around your tube for your engine mount rings to go on, or in this case we're uh, sliding these rings down and we want to make sure we get everything aligned up. So it works really good. Uh, I've marked all the tubes this way. I've started assembling the larger booster uh, saddle and right now I'm letting the glue set up. We've got the bottom part, be sure your pegs face, face forward. And then the middle and the top one will be adjusted according to the shuttle, which is uh, very smart that Estes did that and didn't give strict measurement. So we're going to continue marking. We're going to start gluing up these, um, sanding out the inside so that they slide relatively easy on them. I don't want them to just be really loose on the tubes, uh, but I don't want them so snug that I'm, I'm fighting to get them on and off because then when you go to glue, they'll seize and you won't get them where you want them. So we'll continue this and we'll start more glue up. 
All right, so now we're sitting at this point. We've got uh, two struts on our main boosters. The third strut uh, just slides on. It's uh, going to be a loose fit until we actually get ready to mount the glider because that way we get the distance between the pins and the nose hook exactly right for that particular model. We got the uh, auxiliary boosters strapped and saddled together. We've got the body sanded all the way around so now this edge is nice and smooth. Uh, we've got the nose piece gluing right now. As soon as that's good and hard sometime tomorrow I'll take and uh, shape and sand this block into my nose. Uh, we also have the uh, ailerons. Uh, the rudders are dry now and the ailerons are in position. Again we have this little piece here that's not glued on that's just holding the angle for the aileron so you have the proper uh, elevation on the ailerons. Uh, so pretty much going to let everything dry up overnight. Um, again we'll be sanding the nose cone, uh, working on the motor mount, uh, getting it mounted into the body tube, and working on the body. Of course uh, sanding these uh, for fit uh, was something I had to do. We'll be sanding the nose cone of course, uh, scuffing up the body a little bit for uh, prep for paint. Uh, everything's pretty much ready to go. We'll be adding fillets to uh, our rudders and our ailerons tomorrow after the, this batch of glue has had a chance to dry and we'll be set for uh, getting ready to prime and paint and then final assembly. This is one of the ones where you kind of have to paint it before you do final assembly. You do all the sub assemblies, paint it, and then do your final uh, assembly of everything because these are white, the body to the uh, main tank is orange. If you go by the schematics they use, uh, the shuttle is going to be a little bit more difficult with some of it being black and some of it being uh, uh, white. So I'll probably be doing some uh, hand painting, uh, enamel hand painting, like uh, on the underside. I can probably paint that with a can, but then the back sides of the fans are black. Leading edges black, the nose. So there's going to be a lot of hand painting, uh, most likely for this one for me. So uh, let this sit overnight and we'll get working on it again tomorrow. Breaking from the order on the instruction, purely because it would be very, very hard to paint this as a completed model with the booster tank on. This is all orange, these are all white. Um, I like to use spray paint for a better finish. I don't really see me doing brush painting all of this. Uh, it would be really, really difficult. So I could try and brush paint this, but with all these on, it would be very difficult. So we're going to go ahead and put the nose cones on, uh, let this all dry up. We'll get the uh, front saddle in place uh, once the shuttle is ready for uh, the measurement check. We actually, this gets adjusted and slid up and down to meet the requirement to other shuttle because each one is built slightly different. And then I'll prime all this. We'll get the motor mount and the um, fins on this. We'll prime this. Sand it, get our color coats on, uh, get the shuttle body primed and, and color coat. And then uh, a final assembly we'll be putting this on and marking where we'll need to uh, sand lightly and remove some glue and then put the uh, glue on to the pieces and assemble it that way. So just a little bit of a deviation from the instructions. Alright, so uh, we glued the nose cone piece on for the 12-piece the sandwich nose part and then I used fine sandpaper, 220 grit, but I did use an electric sander, palm sander, to bring it close to uh, the final shape. I left enough there that I could shape it by hand with ease, so don't take too much off, but I, I brought it close to what it needed to be because that's a lot of wood it would have been sanded. And then I hand sanded the feather to the edge to where now it's nice and smooth, the transition part, a little bit of uh, wood filler, and you won't even be able to tell it's there. And then I rounded the corners by hand, and I rounded the edges by hand, and I over rounded the nose by hand. So don't try and do that with a palm sander, but you can block it to get it close to what it needs to be with a palm sander and then uh, get in there and do detailed hand sanding. That way you get a better finish than if you use the palm sander all the way through. So 
ailerons are on, fins are on. I've got the wood pudding on the bottom. That's going to uh, dry, and then I'll be able to sand that flat, and we'll have a smooth bottom. And that's on both of these. I will be putting another uh, little bit of uh, glue fillet along here uh, to reinforce that seam. Uh, it feels fairly stable and solid right now, but I, I'm always uh, one for a little bit of extra glue and uh, less problems later on. So we've got the fins glued on, and I dry fit it and kept sanding the tabs until they slide in. Fairly easy enough to get them in there, but not loose, loose, so they'd be floppy. Uh, I've got my fillets on there, and they're drying. We've got the nose hook in, and you just use your exacto knife to kind of slice a little divot, and then force the nose hook in there, and then you'll put in some glue and glue it in place with uh, modeler's glue. Uh, when you're getting ready to glue together your uh, rocket packs, uh, one, of, one of two things you can do, either before you glue them up or after you glue them up, but once you've got the two pieces paired together for your saddle, take a, a appropriate sized drill bit or rod, launch rod, and make sure it slides in freely on all three of them because you're going to have to get a launch rod through here and this is my launch rod and it fits through and slides easily. I actually did have to work it a little bit because it was stiff and you don't want to lose you know engine power trying to get it off the rod, hanging it up on the rod. So make sure you do check before you uh, glue this to the body, make sure you do check to make sure you can get your launch rod in and out of there uh, nice and smoothly. Um, of course, after you get your nose hook on, you're able to uh, get your measurement for your forward saddle. And what they have you do is they have you uh, place it on the rocket loosely, and you'll put your front saddle on. You'll put the back pegs on. And basically, you're going to slide everything together like you're getting ready to launch it. And then you'll line up your, your nose hook and you'll bring that up to where it's supposed to be so that everything hooks together nicely. And uh, it, it's really easy to do. Uh, I'm just trying not to disturb everything with wet glue. So, pretty much at a stop point again today. Uh, once all this glue dries and we get to, uh, the fillets on the other side of the wings, um, we're going to go ahead and prime the uh, tubes tomorrow. And we'll prime the uh, shuttle as soon as all the glue's dried on it. And then we'll start getting color coats on everything. I'm going to look up uh, NASA specs and see if I can find out exactly what color orange NASA uses on its um, uh, center tank and uh, try and see if I can match it up and find the same color uh, locally here in a, a hobby shop or something. Uh, I did attach temporarily the uh, elastic shock cord. I will be getting rid of this elastic shock cord and switching up to a uh, um, Kevlar cord. I do not believe in the rubber bands. They get old, they break, um, I'd like to have a little bit longer. This is a fairly long shock cord, but I'd like to have a, a lot longer. I generally, my Kevlar shock cords are between <clears throat> four and five times the length of the rocket. So if I've got a 29 inch rocket, I make four or five 29 inch lengths of uh, uh, cord. A 10 inch rocket, I'm going to have 50 inch cord. So that way there's plenty of uh, distance for everything to slow down. Uh, again, I got my fins sanded. Uh, we got putty on them and they're sanded. I got little divots here and there. I got sand out still. But everything's just about ready to go together for final assembly and uh, right as soon as we get done with the paint. So we're getting, getting primer and paint and then final assembly together. And then uh, hopefully we'll be able to get this thing up uh, January during our uh, January launch.
All right, we're going to build the motor mount, and I've got a suggestion for when you build your motor mount. Um, I didn't record when I did it, but it did make it easier to do this so you can align everything. Now, your fins are notched to hook into this ring. So they actually, uh, the fin has notched, the rings had notched, so they overlap. They join each other like that. So I would put your first ring on, which is the one that's going to be towards the aft or the tail where your rocket motor sticks out. And it's supposed to be a half inch or 13 millimeters from the end of the tube. Then your notched ring, centering ring, goes on. And then your final ring, which is the shock cord mounting ring, and your forward, your forward closure ring. So mount your first ring, let that dry thoroughly. Slide your second ring in place, take your fins and make sure that it all lines up that your fin bumps against this ring and it should be about an inch and a half and check it, you know, do some marks on the tube in advance, mark your tube up like you normally would, your 13 millimeter and then your uh, 3.8 uh, centimeter, you know, inch and a half and mark everything up like you normally would. But after you glue on your first ring, let it dry and then dry fit the second ring and check it with the fin to make sure that your spacing will allow your fin to go in. Otherwise, you're going to be sanding the notch in your fin to make it slip on there right. So, uh, again, kind of like dry fitting your fins on a, uh, uh, a level one build if you've ever done one or your larger through the wall rocket uh, where you have your fins going through the wall. You always double check to make sure that you're going to have all your clearances. And then again, when you slide it into your body tube, you want to make sure that that ring will fit and mark it so that the fins will fit through. So always, before you go gluing things, look how far forward you need to do things. And if you're going to be sliding the fins in, make sure that your rings are centered right and that they're in the tube far enough or uh, however it may set up. And it helps out a lot. So the nozzles, the smaller nozzles, they're all painted uh, and ready to go now. So the next step on them is you've got small rings that we cut out of the cardstock. One's going to go up flush to the bell and then the other one is going to go flush with the end. And they're going to get glued on in that manner. That's so that they fit on the uh, uh, the external tube piece. Now remember, um, one of these small nozzles, you've got five, so one of them is going to go to the shuttle itself. So you want to make sure that you don't uh, glue rings on five of them and then you're stuck with the problem with the shuttle because the shuttle actually has a small hole that will fit only the, the motor ring or the motor cup in it. It doesn't have a ring. So just remember that. So we'll get those uh, glued up and let them dry. Uh, we still have other parts primed and drying and we'll get a second coat of primer on just about everything. And uh, the glider body, we've got our glue flats just about dry. Uh, waiting for the underside ones to finish drying and then we'll start doing our primer coats on the uh, glider body. Uh, we have to do a balance test uh, after we glue in the motor. Uh, center of gravity is supposed to be four and a quarter inches from the tail. So we'll check for center of gravity and then we'll do uh, some glide tests with clay being stuffed in the front or back as needed. And a good way to do your balance test, this is, you can't really balance this on a finger because it's going to rock back and forth. You can get two toothpicks and space them about yay far apart in a piece of styrofoam or clay or something so that you're balancing it right here. Then you can flip the glider over and those two toothpicks will stick up and balance until you find the balance point on the rocket that way. And that's another great way of finding your balance on any of the gliders is use the wings as your brace and just move it back and forth until you find your balance. So we'll get things going and uh, continue on with our build. So we've got the uh, nozzles glued up and ready to go. And you can see, of course, yes, I did paint them before. And we glued the first ring on. And basically, I just slid the ring on, uh, smeared glue around the edge, lifted it up, and pushed it back down, and made sure that I had glue contact all the way around. Let that dry, sitting right side up overnight. Then the next day, I smeared glue around the nozzle again, and then put it onto, just slid it right into the second ring. And I had a piece of plastic from the packaging on the, so that it wouldn't glue to the table and I slid that down I did that with all four and you can see that that gap is so that when you slide it into the body tube it has something to grab. So we'll set these aside and they're ready to go when we get to that part of the assembly. Right now we're in various stages of priming and painting. I've got fillets going on the body tube so I can't pick it up right now. 
Uh, I did wash my hands, so if I touch the paint, I'm not too worried about contaminating it. Again, this is that hook I made earlier, and I just bent it into a better J to uh, hold the rocket while I'm painting it, so it goes right through that, and I can use that to hold it for drying. Um, we've got our primer coats done, we've got our coats of white on, and there's a couple spots that I could touch up a little bit. I think I'll get another coat of primer white on before I uh, do any more uh, sanding on this just to build it up a little bit more and then we'll start doing touch-up paints on that um, uh, hoping to start getting some orange on the nose cone today and uh, I'm using the Rust-Oleum uh, fire orange it looks about the closest that I could find to the rust color that they used on the shuttle so uh, I'm hoping it's going to match up. And then I'm opting to go with flat black and flat white for my uh, paint on the shuttle itself. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get going with some more uh, sanding and priming and uh, continue on. So we're uh, moving quite well on the build. Uh, we did the nozzles for the uh, booster tubes. Uh, the other day we glued the paper rings on and now they're cemented in here. We use a plastic model cement for that. feels nice and firm. This is all painted and ready for uh, being glued onto the body tube. I've taken sandpaper and I've gone on the inside because we painted this beforehand and I've scuffed off all the paint and primer on this part of it. Now I could have put tape on there, I could have put a paint mask or something like that, but I wasn't too worried about being able to scuff this off. Again, using a wooden dowel with a uh, sandpaper on, I can just here and go back and forth. And it takes a little bit of time, but it works. And then the same thing with our larger uh, solid boosters, we've got the uh, nozzles glued in, and then we also scuffed the paint out from the inside rings here. <clears throat> Nose cone is painted. I think I got the color pretty close to what the actual uh, shuttle colors look like. Uh, so hopefully this does come out looking fairly close. Um, when I get done with everything, I'm going to put a matte finish on. I'm going to spray a matte clear coat to hold the decals on place and protect the paint surfaces and to dull this down. I don't want any shine on it because the original shuttle has no shine. It's all uh, dull finish. So we're going to go with matte on that. The uh, shuttle itself right now is drying with uh, the second or third coat of white, prim uh, white primer on. I'm using white primer because it's dull white so it works fine and I can sand it if I see a defect. And then the uh, external tank is uh, getting ready for its first coat of orange. Uh, we're using the 2X primers uh, from Rust-Oleum and I've also got the, I couldn't find any primer color, but I've got the Satin Fire Orange Rust-Oleum 2X that I'm using on the ET tanks. The bottom of the shuttle and the black areas will be getting a flat enamel and then I'll be doing some hand painting with flat uh, testers model paint uh, if I can't find a flat enamel uh, that I can paint with from a stolium in liquid form. So that's where we're sitting at now. We're going to go ahead and get some more paint on the uh, shuttle and the uh, ET tank going and uh, then we'll be showing those whole shortly and start the final assembly of all these parts together. So we're now going to all the sub assemblies. What I did with the main boosters is I sanded off all the primer and the white paint on the uh, cradle parts that were touching the rocket. And I lined it up on the rocket, marked it with a pencil, and sand it using stick with sandpaper wrapped around it to sand off the areas where it was going to touch onto the body of the rocket. And I marked it with a pencil, then I sanded it off down to the... Uh, tube <clears throat> so they would get good adhesion. I'm using epoxy and all I did is I just basically uh, mix the epoxy up using a, a wooden uh, popsicle stick. I applied the epoxy along the edges where I was going to be gluing, strapped it on, lining up on my marks that I'd made earlier, and then I'm using the tape to hold it in place while the epoxy sets up. I'm getting ready to tape this back part here. It looks like it's got a good grab and I may not have to tape it. The, the front seemed to be a, not quite grabbing as well, so I taped it up. So we'll let this uh, set up. We'll roll it over. 
You do the same thing with the other side. Uh, these line up a little bit better. They line up at the bottom of the tube. And then we'll epoxy them into place. And then we'll let them dry. And then we'll be uh, ready to start uh, final fitting and uh, making sure the glider is going to break free when it time, uh, comes time for launch. Uh, we're going to be painting the glider by hand for all the uh, rest of the detail painting. So my little uh, black on the side, on the inside of the fins, the front and leading edges, I'm going to do all that by hand. Uh, I'm going to try and copy the box as much as possible. So we're going to start doing that while we have blue drying. All right, so we've got the uh, basics done on the shuttle now. All the paint's on. Uh, we went and we sanded off using popsicle stick and sandpaper everywhere where the paint was at that the uh, booster tubes and everything had to attach to so that we could glue it. I did use epoxy to glue those on so that they're on there nice and firm if I didn't quite do a good job sanding. And we're set for... Uh, decals. I'm probably going to try and touch up the paint on the shuttle a little bit more, get my lines a little bit cleaner if I can. Uh, it looks pretty good, but I think I can do a little bit better uh, cleaning up these lines. Um, and then we're going to start doing the decals on everything else. Uh, big things to remember, uh, wash your hands before you do the decals. I've got a bowl over here on the uh, right with uh, warm water. Uh, for my decals. Trim your decals as close as you can to the edges of the, the uh, color or the print or whatever it is on the decal. Uh, if they're a full sheet, if they're already stenciled out and in the shapes that they're supposed to be, you don't have to worry about that as much. And I like to use paint brushes to apply my decals. I've got a large brush that I'll take and I'll get water on and then I'll, I'll brush the area where I'm going to put the decal with water. Then I'll put the decal on and I'll use that same brush and another smaller brush to manipulate the decal into the position I want and then I'll hold it and kind of swipe the water out from it and then I'll take a paper towel and I'll blot the decal dry to get it in place a lot better than uh, what it may or may not be. And it's pretty much how I've always done my decals. It just works out really, really well for me to do it that way. Uh, by wetting, wetting the surface, it has a little bit of water underneath it. It helps keep it up. You can blot it. And it, you don't want to wipe with the paper towel. You want to blot because if you wipe, you could move it. And once you push all that water out from underneath it, it's going to be very hard to reposition the, the uh, decal. So don't blot it until you're sure you've got it exactly where you want. You can always put a drop of water on top and help keep it moist and move it around. So we're going to go ahead and start doing the decals. And uh, I'm going to get the first couple of decals for the uh, boosters set up. And then uh, we'll try and demonstrate how we do it. I've trimmed the uh, first decal out of the sheet. Now I have some very, very sharp uh, scissors. Uh, they're like iris scissors. You can get these scissors curved. They're medical supplies type scissors. Um, you can get them curved. You can get them straight. And these are really good for cutting out decals because uh, you can cut really, really close to the edges of your detail. Uh, I've pre-positioned where this is going to go. I've kind of sat here and, and played with it back and forth and found the spot where it's going. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put it in my water. Now I'm going to go in quickly. I'm going to try and make sure that it stays submerged. Now it's going to uncurl in a little bit and relax and it's going to start to come off the paper. We want to wait until it does that. If we don't, we might be forcing the issue and actually end up um, causing damage to the decal itself. I've got my brushes. I'm going to pre-wet both of them so that they're, they're both wet and they're going to sit on the edge of the bowl for me ready to go. I've got my other decals that I'm not putting on yet off to the side where they're not going to get water on them or anything else like that. So now we're going to pre-wet our area. I'm just going to take and I'm going to lightly brush and there's not going to be a lot of water there but there's water there. Uh, let's see if I can get it to where you can see. But there, there's beads of water there uh, and that's going to help give me a layer to, to move it around or suspend the decal up. I'm using my finger to see if it's gotten loose on the paper yet. 
and it's just about there. We want it to slide off easily, but we don't want it to come off in the bowl because then it will be hard to keep it from uncurling or keep it from curling. So we're going to set it where we want it. And I'm going to line up my marks. And if my head gets in the way, I'm sorry. Okay, so I've got it just about where I want it. Now I'm going to slide it up just a little bit high and then pull it down on the end. See how I got it to release there. Now I'm trapping it with my finger and I'm going to use my tweezers or I can use my thumb, fingernail or whatever to pull on the backing paper. And we're basically just going to slide it right off in place as close to where we want it as possible. And then we're going to look at it See, I can move it around fairly easy because of that water that I put underneath it. I'm going to trap it and I'm going to brush the water out from underneath it. At the same time, I'm pushing it around, trying to position it, get rid of any wrinkles I may or may not have. Uh, before you use your brushes for the first time, be sure to beat them on something really, really hard to get any loose bristles out and then um, pull on them. Rinse them with water a couple of times, just all sorts of things to get all the excess water out before you use them for the first time. Okay, so that's about centered and about where I want it. If I'm going to touch the decal, I moisten my fingertips before I touch because it will grab your fingers otherwise. I'm going to start pushing water out from underneath it gently. Very gently pulling water out from the top of it. Really, I'm not putting any pressure with the, the towel at all. And then as it starts to, to grab and adhere, you can see where it's grabbing and adhering. You can start to push the water out from underneath. And it moved a little bit, so we can move it back up. Okay, so I'm going to wet my finger. I'm going to trap it. Now I'm actually going to put a little pressure on it this time. Move to a dry spot again. I'm to make sure it's smoothing out well. I just start drying out there. Wet my other finger and my thumb. And then I'm just gently pushing. I'm not really pushing that hard with the paper towel. If I push too hard, I'll rip the decal. And finish smoothing out any wrinkles I see. I'll push the wrinkles out to the side, left or right, to the tail, however you have to go. Just look at them and you'll be able to tell which way you need to go. Yeah, we've got it on. So that's our first decal. A whole bunch more to go. Um, and then we'll let it dry for about three or four days to make sure there is no water underneath these decals. Because if you hit it with a clear coat or a lacquer coat of clear or matte or anything, it's going to immediately go wrinkle, wrinkle. Really, really bad. Uh, a good example of that is uh, this rocket right here. I didn't allow it to fully dry and it caused wrinkles in the decals and wrinkles in the paint. So if you don't let that paint off gas really, really well before you hit the, hit it with a um, clear coat, it's gonna wrinkle it. So I always say after I paint a rocket, I let it dry for three days before decals. And after decals, I let it dry for three days before I actually start clear coating. Um, again, that's weather dependent. The hotter it is, a little bit less time you need. If it's humid, a little bit more time. Even with paint, you need a little bit more time if it's humid. Uh, you can make the Easy Bake Rocket Oven, which is three 75 watt light bulbs stuck into a uh, wardrobe box and you hang your rockets in that. So we're going to complete the decals. Something I did forget to mention when I'm doing uh, decals, if this is a whole shoot where they're basically the decal, each design is not separated from the rest of them, that you have to cut them out. 
uh, literally it's a whole sheet um, I always try and make sure I round any corners I don't want to have sharp corners because sharp corners can peel up easier so I'm really rounding when I cut and it makes it hard to get close to the the design but it's also a lot better than having corners that can peel up easier and when you clear coat or you matte coat matte spray uh, that's gonna hide a lot of your your edges and stuff like that and the decal stands out by itself but by rounding it again we're not gonna have the problems with uh, sharp edges that can uh, peel up real easy now again what I mean by uh, this is all one sheet yes but some decals each piece has a, its own little border where the whole material isn't printed on one big piece of thing. If I if I were to drop this in the water, the whole sheet would come up as one piece. Whereas the they have other types where each decal is its own separate decal, even though it's on one sheet. So that's what I mean by when you have one sheet decal. So all the decals are on. I did uh, change up the way I put a couple of them on versus the uh, way the uh, actual image was. The actual image had the planet or whatever you want to call it with stars and the flag down here on opposite sides. Um, I decided that I wanted to put it up center uh, instead of having a big blank space up here, kind of spread them all out across the top. The Estes that would have gone on the other fin of the booster, I put in the back here because I like having Estes on my stuff. Uh, otherwise, everything else is pretty well stock on this part of the build, uh, the f side fins. Uh, the side windows, all that stuff is pretty much the way that it was set up in the original. Uh, same thing with the uh, booster uh, set up. Everything's pretty much the same. Uh, they had these little warning decals. I don't know where they were supposed to go. I just stuck them down there. Uh, wasn't too difficult at all. Uh, they do actually have an alignment uh, set up for this one here. It wraps all the way around. If you cut it right towards uh, one side, you won't be able to see it too well in this camera, but it actually has a spot where the dots will line up and it has a little bit of a blank. So you can, if you wet the rocket, the nose cone before you put it on, and that's actually the upper nose cone portion that, that's on. If you wet it before you start applying it, uh, wet the nose cone, it'll make it easier to slide around and move it. And then when you trap it in one area, wipe all the way around and come back over and then let that, let that last little piece flip over as you finish your wipe. But be careful not to push too hard or you'll move it around and you'll just be doing circles and it won't actually get anything accomplished. Um, yeah, everything else was really, really easy. So we're going to let this dry for about three days. Uh, I'm really big about letting things dry for a long time in between coats of paint, uh, before I put on uh, sealer, before I put on decals, all that stuff. I let it dry to make sure that all the volatile organics and everything get off gas. Uh, off gassing is what causes decals to wrinkle, it causes clear coat to wrinkle. And all that. So by letting it off gas, we won't have that problem with this. So uh, we've got the build done. Uh, hopefully, we'll be launching this uh, by about January at the latest. I'm hoping, which is our next scheduled launch for the club. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to get that off on uh, our Jack Frost launch. Um, otherwise, uh, it'll probably be spring because <laughs> uh, January, February, it, we never know if it's going to rain or not. So uh, thanks for watching the watching me build this. It was an enjoyable build. I uh, hope all my hints and uh, little po uh, things that I suggest to help you with your build. Uh, keep them flying up and high, and uh, have a great day.